for this day that you have made that we should worship you this year day of the, uh, November the 5th, the 5th of 2017. Thank you, o Lord Holy Spirit, for having us, uh, for always being there to teach us all things. Thank you for, for the scripture that you gave us today. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 11 and he wanted to extend it to the whole chapter. I read, but all these worketh, all these worketh that one and the self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. End of quote. This is the word of God, the word that uh, he gave us today. Praise be your holy name, Father Lord, we bless your holy name. Today, the Lord teaches us about diversity through divine gifts. Diversity through behind, be, through divine gifts, through Yahweh's gifts. The Apostle Paul adds more of us, somewhat else, somewhat else that, that is, that also these gifts, these gifts are unequal, yet they are most wisely divided, because the will of the Holy Spirit of Yahweh is the rule of this distribution. He, the Holy Spirit, is the one who gives the gift. It looks like an answer to someone who asked me a question during the night vigil about the gift. And this is, this is it. This is what he's talking about. So these gifts, ministrations and operations are so different in themselves and are bestowed upon different persons, yet they are all wrought by one and the same Holy Spirit of God, who is the true Yahweh and the properly God, as these his works declare for who but the Most High God could ever communicate such gifts to man. Then the scripture says, dividing every man severally as he will. Let us explain these things first before we go uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in what the Lord wants to tell us. That means the Holy Spirit giving one man, my, one, one man this gift, another that, imparting such a, a, a measure to one and such a portion to another, just as seems good to his side. For as his special grace of regeneration is dispensed when, when and where and to whom he pleases, uh, uh, signified by the blowing of the wind, where it, it lists, as it is said in John, John 3 verse 8, so his gifts, ordinary or an extraordinary, they are, they are all kinds of gifts. They can seem to you ordinary and they can seem to you miraculous. All these gifts are severally distributed according to his sovereign will and pleasure. This is a clear and full proof of the personality of the Holy Spirit who is not only distinguished from his gifts and the distribution of them which is a personal act described in him. Remember, many churches do not preach the Holy Spirit because he is not present in them. And they even preach that there is no gift of, you know, those things are passed away, are passed away in the first century, they are over. They are not happening anymore. They happen only <laughs> manifesting it on the apostles, not on men. But we know, all of us, when he wants, he gives you a taste of his gifts. And even in this assembly, he already did 
uh, to some of us. But this is said to be done according to his will, which supposes him an intelligent agent capable of choosing and willing. That's what this, this verse is saying. And whose will agrees with the Father Yahweh's and the Son Yahshua's. So, he is ever present. People, people uh, are, are used to be stuck only on Jesus, 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 Jesus all the time, and then losing the meaning of, of Christ. So let us talk about the variety, the variety of use of spiritual gifts uh, as it is shown in this. The Greek word translated gifts, gifts is charismata, charismata, the source of the word charismatic, charismatic. The word could also be interpreted as gifts, gifts of grace. Paul says that Christ's church is to be a charismatic, Holy Spirit filled church. That is the church of Christ. A church that is void of Holy Spirit works and gifts is not, not a church of Christ. When you see a cold church without any, any signs, of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, of the works of the Holy Spirit, that is not a church of Christ. Many of the Corinthians came from pagan backgrounds, uh, but the idols they once worshipped were mute and offered no help or direction to them. The Holy Spirit of Yahweh, in contrast, will would provide them with knowledge and spiritual substance. In verses 8 to 11 of these uh, First Corinthians 12, the, there is a list there of the spiritual gifts. But this list of gifts, uh, 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 which is also completed in verses 28 to 30, is not exhaustive because God has no limit. He can give you any types of gifts that He wants. So spiritual gifts... Uh, 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 Paul also provides another, another list in Romans 12 verses 6 to 8 and Ephesians 4 verses 11 to 13. Spiritual gifts are extraordinary powers granted. So, so extraordinary means those are not the power that you can claim that you were born with them. <laughs> they just happen one day. And because he doesn't want, he's a jealous God. He doesn't want to be confused with anything. When he gives you a gift, that's why the gifts are not something you suppose. Gifts, he will show you that he gives you the gifts and you will know that. And you will see the difference from the past that you didn't have those kind of things. So, and not only in the first century as, as some churches pretend but until this day, those gifts he keeps giving to convince unbelievers and to also spread the gospel. The gifts for those who, who, who can believe only when they see things are happening. That is why God made the gifts. The, so that those miracles they can see and be convinced. And the gifts are also helping you in the ministry. Because you will be delivering people, you will be touching the people with the word. Spiritual gifts are so, as I said, spirit, uh, 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 extraordinary powers given by, granted by God. Gifts and graces are co uh, uh, con concepts that greatly differ. Gifts and grace is not the same thing. Uh, both are given by Yahweh, yes, but where grace is given, it is for the salvation of those who have it. Gifts, on the other hand, are for the advantage and salvation of others. Look at this. The grace is for your own salvation, to push you to salvation. But gifts are most only for others to help others and there may be 
grand gifts even where there is no grace for the person. Uh, the extraordinary gifts of the Holy Spirit were chiefly exercised in the public assemblies where the Corinthians seem to have made displays of them. They uh, thus wanting in, 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 in the spirit of pity and Christian love. So uh, in, in this case, uh, it was a, like a competition of gifts. Everybody will say he has a gift. And even in our church, we, we experience that. People saying they are prophets and uh, making testimonies that, that are not true. They would come in the, in the assembly of God and say, this is my testimony, I had a dream, and so on. Then you would find out that the dream he's talking about is only on the internet. <laughs> so, you cannot do that with God. No man can call Christ the Lord with believing dependence upon him unless that faith is brought by the Holy Spirit. No person can believe with his or her heart or prove, by, or prove it by a miracle uh, uh, that Yahshua is Christ unless by the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit. There are various gifts and various offices to, to perform the gifts. But all proceed from one God, one Lord, one Spirit. That is from the Father Yahweh, the Son Yahshua, and the Holy Spirit, who is the, who is the origin of all spiritual blessings. No person, no person has them merely by himself or herself. The more a person profits others, the more will they turn, turn to, to his or her own account. <laughs> when you use the gifts and... Uh, this is so extraordinary. I was talking with a minister yesterday before the Lord gave us this, this preaching. And I was telling him that my experience is that he, the Lord showed me that the gifts of healing are, are not me. Sometimes I was going, they called me to go and, uh, and heal somebody, pray for somebody. When I go, I say, I'm going to deliver him. I'm going to. But when I go, Nothing happened. But one day, even when I start praying only, people start manifesting, shaking the, all those things, where things that the, the demons used to do all over them. That is God. He, 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 this, is, he, this is the Holy Spirit showing that it is Him, not me, not the minister. The gifts mentioned appear to mean exact understanding and uttering words of unknown languages which we call tongues the knowledge of mysteries and the skill to give advice or counsel extraordinary all of them extraordinary miraculous also the gifts of healing the sick the working of miracles and to explain scripture by a peculiar a peculiar gifts of the holy spirit the ability to speak and interpret languages which we call tongues. Gifts are the means Yahweh uses to make his servant, his servant flow and pour out the water of life into the souls of neighbors. Do you remember the night vigil? He explained us the notion of the water of life in Ezekiel 47 verses 9 to 10. If we have any knowledge of the truth or any power to make it known, we must give all the glory to Yahweh. The greater, the greater the gifts are, remember this, the greater the gifts are, the more the possessor of those gifts is exposed to temptations. Beware. When Satan sees that you have gifts on you, then he will tempt you so that you will fall back in, in sin and lose your gifts. And the larger is the measure of grace needed to keep him or her humble and spiritual. And 
he or she will meet with more painful experiences and humbling dispensations. The Holy Spirit is going to force you to be humble. We have little cause to glory in any gifts bestowed upon us and to despise those who do not have them. This second leg as in the human body Every member has its place and use in Christ's church. Know that. There is nobody, as I, I will show, Paul emphasizes the importance of unity in the body of Christ. The body of Christ is the church of Christ. The church, so comprised of many members, is intended to be a single unit an organic whole regardless of racial or religious backgrounds Jews and or Greeks for the case of Corinth Jews and Greek or social standing slaves and free men unity is not the same as uniform there is difference between unity and uniformity various groups within Christianity and even within the denominations, because there are denominations today, will have different opinions that should be respected. As long as all agree on the great orthodox spiritual truth that all Christ followers share because they are the words of Yahshua. The something that should never, should never be shaken is the word of God. So they can have their own opinions, but the word of God has to stay the same. No physical body can function as all seeing and all hearing and all smelling. Not all the organs have those capacities. So why should the church expect to function with a focus on only one spiritual gift? And we have that experience in our ministry. Uh, because the the pastor has the gifts of uh, of healing and prophecy, everybody would claim that I, I, me also God speaks to me. Uh, uh, so and we, we we end up in false testimonies, things like that, just to prove that uh, me too I am a I am a prophet. Those are the things that you we should be, and that is what what creates. Uh, conflicts in churches because everyone wants to be a pastor and to be a pastor everyone wants to claim that he has the same gift as that pastor so that he can replace him that's what what happens you will always all, hear all time that there are fights in churches it's just because of that people in a church are not all the same their gifts will differ according to Yahweh's will Believers should learn to accept one another because of that truth. They are called to celebrate their diversity within the unity of the church, which provides a place of belonging for a wide range of followers of Yahshua the Messiah. The various members of the holy body of Christ, which is the earthly kingdom of Yahweh, the church of Christ, are not just to tolerate one another. Remember, we, when I say tolerate, we are not talking here of tolerating sin. We are talking of tolerating in the service of God. So that all of us we can serve to do together. As with the parts of the human body, uh, mutual interdependence is critical to proper operation. The effectiveness, health and vitality of the church are dependent on how well its various members function together as a whole. No individual has the right to say to uh, the other one, I don't need you. And whether or not a ch church members realize it, each person is indispensable for the collective effectiveness of the church and of the world. Indeed, unity and interdependence create a richness and, and texture for, for the collective witness of the church. Christ and his church form one body as head and members do for the human body. Christ's followers 
become members of this body by baptism both with water and with the Holy Spirit and fire. Baptism of water should be church officials church official recognition of the converts brokenness brokenness I insist and, and uh, this referring to Matthew 16 verse 24 Isaiah 40 verses 3 to 5 when Christ said if you want to follow me deny yourself carry your cross then you can follow me baptism of the Holy Spirit is by the grace of Yahweh and his spirit will bestow the gift necessary to fulfill the servant's calling. The outward rite of, uh, of that baptism is of divine institution. It is, it is a sign of the new birth and it's called therefore the washing of regeneration. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. What we do by the, 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 the pastor the, 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 the anointed pastor laying hands on you and uh, 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 telling you that receive the Holy Spirit. This is a ritual, but only the Holy Spirit is doing everything. The scripture says, the apostle wrote, I quote, He saved us not because of what your things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, end of quote quoting Titus 3 verse 5. It is by the Holy Spirit only by the renewing of the Holy Ghost that we are made members of the body of Christ. Christ followers, Christians as we call ourselves. And by communion with Christ as the Lord's Supper, we are strengthened not by drink of the wine, but by drinking into one Holy Spirit. The water of life, the water of life as we talked about uh, during the night vigil. Each member has its, its form, place and use. The meanest make a part of the body. There must be a distinction of members, however, in the body. So Christ members have different powers and different places. We uh, should do the duties of our own place and not murmur or quarrel with others which exhibits lack of brokenness and, the, and also or the, the, the presence of the Jezebel spirit in the church. All the members of the body are useful and necessary to each other. Nor is there a member of the body of Christ but who may and should be useful to, to, to fellow members. As in the natural body of Christ, the members should be closely united by the strongest bonds of love. Love, the good of the whole, should be the object of all. It's, it should not be about us individually. That is why we need brokenness, breaking self on on you. The, you we wouldn't have quarrels in the in the churches if people were broken of self or pride. All Christ followers are dependent upon one another. Each is to expect and receive help from the rest. Let us then have more of the spirit of union in our, in our Christianity. Contempt, hatred, envy and strife are very unnatural, unnatural in Christ followers. Which that shouldn't be seen. It is like the members of the same body being without concern for one another. Or, or quarreling with one another. Should the hand be quarreling with the eye? It is uh, so the proud, contemptuous spirit that prevailed in the Corinthian church as the two spiritual gifts was thus condemned in this scripture. This is applied to the, the church of Christ. Not everyone can preach, not everyone can sing, but everyone is gifted to do something. Apparently the problem in Corinth was a rivalry among uh, spiritual gifts and uh, a je jealousy that caused some people to covet the gifts of others, uh, which is seen everywhere in, in Christian churches where there is lack of brokenness. There was no unity, no positive diversity, and certainly no interdependence. 
And there is something more excellent than spiritual gifts. The offices and gifts or favors dispensed by the Holy Spirit are noticed. First, the apostles, second, the prophets, and third, the teachers are the chief ministers of the Church of Christ. And then come the persons enabled with the gifts of miracles, the gifts of healing, the gifts of helping and guidance and of tongues, those who labor in word and doctrine, those who have power to heal diseases such as help the sick and the weak, <laughs> because uh, the diseases are not just physical diseases, the, the, the greatest uh, diseases are spiritual such as dispose of the money given in charity by, uh, by the church and manage the affairs of the church and, and such as can speak diverse tongues even though these hierarchical, hierarchical list is not exhaustive uh, uh, that which holds the last and lowest rank in this list is the speaking of in tongues the speaking in tongues should be the B A B A B B A B B A B A B. You know that means the, the the initial thing because you start by that when you are baptized of the Holy Spirit. The, the first thing that He gives you is uh, is, is is the gift of tongues. So in a Christian church.